MX Carburetor Parts here. We're here to talk about this Holley 1904 one barrel and what causes it to flood. Uh, now first of all, what is flooding? Uh, flooding uh, is when gas is pouring out over the top uh, through the vent from the float bowl or perhaps it's coming out of the throttle shaft quite a bit or it's just plain running down your carburetor. Uh, that that's that's flooding. Don't don't confuse it with just being too rich. Too rich means the air fuel mixture is uh, uh, has too much fuel and not enough air for whatever reason. It could be a jet size, uh, could be a plugged up vent, uh, uh, idle vent, could be a lot of things. But anyway, we're here to talk about flooding. Flooding is pretty obvious. You got too much fuel, and it's there's so much fuel it just keeps coming in and just overflowing from the carburetor. So uh, what causes it? Uh, the most common cause is dirt in the fuel. Uh, dirt in your carburetor. Dirt will get in the needle and seat. Dirt will, dirt will get in passages. Uh, if your carburetor is dirty, hasn't been rebuilt for a few years, then that's the first thing you need to do is clean up your carburetor and rebuild it. Okay, so um, that, that's dirt. Um, the, another thing that, that could give you trouble, uh, if you have a car that's been sitting around for a long time, which is very typical with a classic car, uh, if you have one been sitting for several months, then there's a good chance that the, car, the gas turned and varnished the inside of your carburetor. So some of these uh, uh, passages are very small and so if you get any varnish at all it's going to get plugged up that will cause it to flood out uh, t typically though that seems to cause more of a not enough gas because it can't get in there but we're here to talk about flooding okay so first thing we're going to check um, we, we've got by the dirt the most common cause we're going to look at the needle and seat uh, you want to be careful when you're adjusting the float on these things that you don't put any pressure on the needle it doesn't take much to damage the vitin tip which is a little rubber tip to help help it seal uh, so you look at that make sure there's no scoring or dimples on or anything uh, so here's the needle and seat here this is the seat and the needle sits right in here okay um, so the needle and seat's always suspect on these 1904s. It's pretty common for these to leak around the around the seat. So, like I say, if you're putting pressure on the needle while you're adjusting the float, uh, that could be a problem. Okay. So um, to test it, first of all, we turn it upside down. That way, the float is resting on the needle and and it supposedly is sealing, blowing the inlet. Now I'm getting quite a bit of air. You you can get a little, if you blow hard enough, you'll get a little bit of air. But basically you want to see if that needle is sealing. Okay. This one ain't too bad considering it's missing a washer. Alright. So that's the first thing you test for. You can use your uh, compressed air, but remember compressed air could have 150 pounds. So, And you're looking at 4 pounds of pressure here. All right, so that that tests it. Now, if you're leaking past it, then then you already know what your problem is. But let's take a look at these now. Like I say, these 1904s are uh, um, famous for the needle and seat to leak, and the reason is is the way they s seal onto the carburetor. Now these are pretty old now, 60 years old or so, and uh, these things. We'll have several gaskets. Uh, there's one gasket right here which happens to be missing on this. I don't know what happened to it. I probably took it apart. Uh, you'll see the gasket would fit right there, right inside on that screw. Uh, this is the inlet screw. It also has a little gasket on there. Um, so you can treat these threads with a little bit of uh, thread locker, like blue thread blue or red thread locker just put a little dab in there though you don't want it to get into your carburetor uh, whenever you rebuild one of these put a little permatex anaerobic around here on both sides of your gaskets 
wherever there is a gasket because the sealing problem is right here okay these get pitted or whatever and, and it's probably going to leak there's just a lot of stuff there uh, that can cause it to leak so that's the first thing you check you want to check your uh, float for leaks heat up a, a pan of water just prior to boiling and immerse the float if you get any bubbles at it all uh, out of the float then uh, you need to get a new float uh, move the float up and down let's get this back on here as I said there's a gasket missing right here so uh, if you're putting yours together by this video be sure you put the gasket in there I just don't have one in front of me goes in there okay so is a float dropping just drops down to there that opens that opens it let fuel in um, when you have it over upside down like that that float should be level if it's level, it's adjusted just fine. That's what you're looking for, a level float. Move the float up and down gently and see if you feel any catching. Uh, if so, maybe the needle, even look at your needle and make sure uh, um, it's not grooved or something because that, that could be a problem. Okay, so that's your, uh, that's your needer, needle and seat. Um, so the other thing is to test your fuel pump pressure. And new fuel pumps are especially suspect. So uh, there should be about four pounds of pressure. What you're going to have to do is take the line off the inlet here. And you're going to have to get you a fuel pump tester. Now there's one uh, for all, a carbureted fuel pumps uh, because they don't need to test but about four pounds or four to ten pounds, something like that. This one should be around four pounds. Um, there's also uh, fuel pump testers for fuel injection. They go, they're much higher pressure um, so you got to be careful what you buy they're not very expensive so but you want to check the pressure and uh, especially if you had a new fuel pump because they just don't seem to uh, they seem to ignore the specifications for some reason that's what we were finding all right so any doubt uh, get you a, a pressure regulator and install it between the fuel pump and the carburetor and then you can regulate it to what you want it to be okay all right so uh, that's uh, pretty much covers the flooding part of it and one thing I might mention if it's running out of the uh, throttle shaft uh, it, there's nothing necessarily wrong with the throttle shaft it's just gas running down the bore and the first thing it hits is that uh, uh, throttle plate and runs out the shaft that that's normal the shafts can't seal uh, totally or the shaft wouldn't turn okay there's no seals down there at least on this carburetor uh, so there you go so there's a few ideas about flooding like say it's just generally dirt or needle needle in a seat um, that'll give you some ideas on what to look for okay uh, so you can buy parts for this at Mike's Carb. 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 Mike. Excuse me. Mike's Carb. Com. That's M I K E S C A R B. Com. Thank you, and we appreciate your business.